We did have a, a professional consultant who had done some marketing studies here and we used him as the kickoff speaker uh, for the summit. And he started with this dismal picture. He said we were like a rust belt, slow growth. We were not very well educated except at the 55 age group and over. And that our uh, market position with retail and so forth was apt to erode. People's morale was down. They, they had quit believing in their city. They didn't think it could happen. And uh, it, the conditions were not good. And, and this was happening to a lot of manufacturing cities. And he just went on and on with all of these negative things about us. And it just irritated us to death. And it frankly just made us very mad. And my mother would say, you should say angry, but it made me mad. And so that was the first day, the first morning of the summit. Uh, we had gathered about 80 uh, business leaders together uh, to provide input on how we could uh, have a positive, more positive future. And he didn't realize it, but he actually made the case for change for us by painting that awful picture. Manufacturing uh, jobs were being cut. So Kingsport was not unlike any of the uh, other communities across America. Um, we just happened to be very dependent upon manufacturing and uh, it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing, but nevertheless we were feeling it greatly as manufacturing jobs were leaving, uh, leaving America. We had to find a new initiative. We, we were not a well-educated community. That was probably one of our biggest problems. People that were losing their jobs had no way of getting an education that, that are training in a trade that they could get a job easily somewhere else. There was jobs available, but we did not have the trained people, and that's why the emphasis so much on education. Uh, we, we could have, uh, we could have uh, reacted in, in several ways. Uh, one way was uh, to crawl under a rock and hide, but instead uh, this community decided to come out fighting, come out swinging, and come up with a new strategy. We had work to do. started having conversations about what needed to be done and there were several things in the in the mix at that point there was downtown redevelopment there was um, uh, higher the need of the college uh, there was uh, trying to retain youth in our city we were the oldest city in the state of Tennessee we had multiple issues we were facing at that point in time and so we started brainstorming some ideas and we came up with a central theme and that central theme was simply we need every kid to go beyond high school. We need every child who graduates from high school to be prepared to take education to the next level and that next level could be a technical school, it could be uh, outside training of some sort or it could be college but every kid needs to go to college and Kingsport needs them to go to college here. Anyone who's looking to bring a company here, the first question they'll ask now is, do you have a qualified workforce? And so it was a question of answering that, do we? And the answer was no. So what do we do to go about trying to get that in our equation, where that when someone looked at us as a community, they'd say, yes, I've got a plan. And we came up with a plan. One of the ways that uh, we were able to uh, look at this was from the very first and something that made I felt very strongly about was that if you really wanted to have a community that was going to sustain itself for the long term and make sure that it was still growing in a quality fashion you had to have a higher educated workforce so it was really important that people understood this is an investment in human infrastructure uh, just like you talk about uh, water and sewer and other roads and other types of infrastructure Human infrastructure is probably the number one thing in terms of making sure you're sustainable for the long term. And then we started seeing opportunities for our first higher ed initiative. We called it the RCAT uh, Building Regional Center for Applied Technology. 
I loved that because it, it put a one-stop shop concept together that we had long talked about. Across the street was childcare. On the other side of the building was public transit, and then education on the other side. So those three initiatives, ride the, the bus, leave your child in the child care center, and come next door and be taught uh, new skills. And this was not only for the 18-year-old who had just graduated from high school, but it was for the current workforce who needed to be retooled. Well, the campus development really, I think, surprised everybody in terms of how quickly it did develop. Uh, you know, I, I saw the vision of what it could be over the long term. I think uh, certainly when we made the decision to uh, go ahead with the higher ed building, which was a major commitment of 12 to $13 million, uh, and we, of course, were trying to find land for buildings of the future. We were already thinking about where could we put additional spaces. Uh, we, we didn't know we'd get one in two or three months, and of course, I think it's a great example of showing that if, if a community makes a commitment like this, and if it's done in the right way, that you have the potential to interest other people in doing other things. For us to be successful as manufacturers, we have to know that our equipment will operate reliably um, and correctly, and that we know how to troubleshoot it effectively. And that requires a lot more than just a, a basic off-the-shelf high school degree. Well, our competition is, is truly global. Uh, in the paper industry, uh, a lot of the uh, competition that we have day in, day out is in South America, it's in China, it's in uh, Eastern Europe. As we uh, learn more about those facilities, they have a very high level of automation. Uh, their average employees, uh, 14 to 15 years of education, which means uh, basically uh, two to three years of post high school education uh, for out on the floor operating jobs. Those people are active learners. They're uh, well abreast of and aware of the new technology and they know how to operate, how to maintain and how to get the most out of that equipment every day. We've got to meet that challenge to survive. Well Domtar and, and uh, particularly Eastman uh, had the advantage of taking part in a public-private partnership that I believe gave us an advantage over our sister mills and, and even our competition in terms of training the worker that we needed for tomorrow. We were able to uh, collaboratively partner with uh, not only Eastman Chemical, but the city of Kingsport and the state of Tennessee to accomplish the needs and the work that had to be done to create RCAM. And it allows uh, a mill like Kingsport that would not have otherwise been able to uh, have such a facility right outside our front gate to partner with uh, all of these agencies to make it happen here. The other, uh, the sister mills that, that we have uh, don't have that advantage. And, and I think that that's in a big part uh, due to the people of Kingsport, uh, the, the tremendous support we get from the state, the, ec the economic and community development folks in, uh, in Nashville, uh, and also uh, the, the great uh, collaboration we have between business and industry here in Kingsport. If 10 years ago someone had come to me and said, we're going to have 2,100 students downtown, I would have thought that could have been a very exaggerated dream. Um, but it started and it's here today. And 2,100 students downtown is not the goal any longer. It's 3,000. I happen to be the staff person who's been around since the beginning of this process. and. Believe me, 10 years ago, I didn't believe that we would be sitting here today talking about the successes that we've had. But today, I'm happy to report that that's not the rest of the story. The rest of the story is that Kingsport's made a remarkable turnaround and the future is very bright. As Assistant City Manager for Development, uh, I'm often reminded that unless you can measure the results, then it doesn't count. So I'm going to share some numbers with you from the Census Bureau. For example, we had 40% of our city workforce em employed in manufacturing in 1999. That number declined to 20.7 percent in 2000 and it's only 15 percent today. By the same token, in education and health care, we've gone up from 18 percent in 2000 to 23 percent. I'm happy to report in, in that 10-year period that we've seen 1,521 new jobs to our community. 
and our median family income has increased from $30,000 a year to $50,000 a year. We're well on our way to achieving our goals. The Harvard Award was presented through the Kennedy School of, of, of Government Excellence and it was for our innovation in the Keysport Higher Education Center. It was for our innovation in the Educate and Grow. I mean, they could, they could not believe that we gave everyone living in the city and the county a free two-year education. I mean, that we guaranteed those high school graduates. A, I mean, that was just un, unbelievable to them. And they felt that the programs that we put, put together and what this city had done was head and shoulders above any other program they had heard of in education and other areas. As I interact with those who do what I do for a living across this country, we, a lot of the subject, that we, a lot of the discussion we have is about the same thing. How do you get the person seeking the job to obtain the skill level that makes them more employable with the employer who is seeking someone to come work for them? And uh, so that disconnect does exist all across the country. We are helping to resolve it here in Kingsport, and what we're doing here in Kingsport truly is being thought of as a model across the country. Resolving that great disconnect issue that I've described is one of the reasons that Harvard has presented us with this Innovations in American Government Award. It can be duplicated. It can be duplicated across this country. The recognition that came from it is, is really nice, but we didn't do it for that but it really does help the city. As a matter of fact, we thought that might come from it, but here's the thing. I'm always asked as a news person, my news background, how do I get recognition? How do I business get recognized? And the answer is do something newsworthy. So Kingsport really did something newsworthy and the kind of ripple effect that that's had starting with the Educate and Grow program was picked up by Associated Press back in 2000. It, generated interest and talk in about Kingsport and the certainly the higher education center and the investment was made there has been nationally recognized state recognized we've been recognized um, through the state of Tennessee as well as parts of the nation for this and of course the crowning achievement being Harvard Innovation Award in fact this is a million dollar uh, public relations win for the city of Kingsport to have uh, that kind of spotlight shown on this city it really helps and it comes to bear when it gets down to economic development. At the end of the day, that kind of recognition is going to pay benefits to this city for a long time to come in economic development. And that is really what we are trying to drive. We are the city that people are asking how did you do it? And how did you do it is, we did it. The citizens of this city did it. You, you can have the best leadership in the world, but if the citizens don't want it to happen, it won't happen. We heard from the evaluators that when they interviewed a variety of people in Kingsport, we all told the same story and no single person or entity took credit for the outcome. And that's exactly what it takes to be able to succeed in the future. And Northeast Tennessee has been particularly proud of the fact that it takes care of its own and does its own and we really felt like frankly this is something we could handle ourselves and quite frankly we didn't think the state of Tennessee or the federal government was going to help us at all. If we we're going to fix our issues it's really up to us to come up with the plan and execute them and I'm really proud that Kingsport and Sullivan County and the rest of the region have really pitched in to make that happen. To win an award such as the Harvard Innovation and Government Award that we won, it takes the entire community. J. Fred Johnson coined the term the Kingsport Spirit, and I can think of no better example than the Kingsport Higher Education Initiative as a demonstration of that can-do attitude of Kingsport citizens. I am so proud of this community, and this Innovation and American Government Award goes to each and every one of you, Kingsport citizens. Thank you very much. Kingsport won a very prestigious award, the Harvard Innovation and American Government Award. What an honor, what a tremendous honor. And I want to say thank you, not to the individuals, because individuals expect no thank you. 
I want to say thank you not to the organizations because those organizations also expect nothing. But I did want to say thank you to the citizens of Kingsport because as we went through this process, as we struggled with wondering whether or not it was the right thing to do, we ultimately found out that it absolutely was the right thing to do. I want to say how much I appreciate the decisions that were made in this particular process and thank so many citizens that were involved in the process giving up their free time to do this to make sure that we do live up to our potential and certainly our staff who worked hard. Uh, we have a number of staff members that worked hard in this process and certainly our Board of Mayor and Aldermen who, who had to give great thought to this. Uh, anytime you make major decisions that are, involve a great deal of money, it's always a tough decision to do that. Uh, but when you do something that's really different and, and and out of the mold, it's really even harder to do that. So I want to say how much I appreciate the fact they've made such a commitment to the future of Kingsport. I want to take the opportunity to say thank you to the citizens of Kingsport. It's one thing to have an idea, to have a vision, but it's something else to have the grit to execute it. And the citizens of Kingsport made this possible, and the citizens of Sullivan County, and we deeply appreciate everybody's effort. On behalf of Domtar Paper Company, all the employees at Kingsport Mill, and uh, the many folks that I work with in the community, I want to thank you, the folks who helped put together the Regional Center for Advanced Manufacturing, the Higher Education Concept, and the Academic Village for everything you've done to make this venture possible, for everything you've done to allow us to apply for and to uh, be able to capture this award. It's a great accomplishment for Kingsport, Tennessee, and something that I think will uh, create the legacy that is Kingsport. Uh, as we go forward and as we continue to grow and build a community that we can not only uh, grow in, uh, get educated in, go to work in, uh, have a great career in and retire in. So thanks a lot, everybody. Well, I think any time that someone comes up with an idea which may be somewhat revolutionary or somewhat different or maybe so different that it's never been done anywhere, as people look at you with skepticism and say, well, that's a nutty idea or those people are crazy. And some of the things we came up with in 1999 out of that summit were really pretty revolutionary. But I think the, the remarkable piece of it is that Kingsport, the citizens of Kingsport and others who looked at this thing, bought into it. Nobody said it's crazy enough not to do. Let's give it a whirl. They bought into it. And the citizens here, many of them in this, in this room this evening, are the ones who've made this work. And I'm grateful to you for it, for listening to the ideas, believing it could happen, and for making it happen. And as I, ho I hope I'm here 10 years tonight from now to see what's taking place downtown here. And I hope you're here 10 years from now to join me. What a community. I love living here and seeing people so dedicated and so willing to make things happen. Let's keep that spirit going. Thank you, Kingsport, for being so special. Dreams do come true, don't they?